So I am in the state of Maharashtra, which actually has taken a pretty big hit. So 35% of all uh, cases are in Maharashtra. 42% um, of the fatalities are also from this state. And since we are not seeing a downward curve in the number of infections, a lot of restrictions are going to be in place. Globally, what we have learned is testing and then isolation and uh, contact tracing and uh, treatment is the solution. However, India, because of both resources and uh, logistics of doing this in a developing country is actually not testing as much. If you look at you know, how many per thousand or per million we are testing, it is actually abysmal. One of the things we did is develop testing center. So what we managed to do during the lockdown, which is actually remarkable, come up with a workflow, isolated rooms where you can deal with samples being received from the uh, hospitals uh, safely, you aliquot them out and the entire workflow all the way to reporting the data to you know, the various authorities. So this is run entirely by volunteers who are scientists, some students, uh, staff, and uh, I think we've been doing quite well. I think particularly developing countries like India, whose science funding, especially for basic sciences, has always been a little precarious. It varies with the nature of the government. Now, a pandemic like COVID for a developing country adds on to this already precarious situation, and this might end up you know, pushing a lot of funds away from, let's say, basic sciences. And this is something scientists would need to counter actively within the country. I think we need to work on advocacy for our governments, put out why basic sciences and fundamental sciences still are the bedrock on which technology may come out, and in fact, how we might counter even things like pandemics. I think that's going to be a key challenge next for most um, uh, scientific communities, especially in developing countries.